maps out. So here, this is one radius. This length and this length are the same, right? Here at 57 degrees. So a radian, and if I had, so if I have a circle that's this small and I have a circle that's this, or this size, right? A radian is just one radius and it maps the same amount. Um, so a radian is how many radi radi radii have I traveled um, along the circle? And there's two pi of them because there's uh, the circumference of a circle is two, uh, two pi r, which is the radius. And so, so a radian is a measure of degrees by asking the question, how many radiuses have I gone through? And that's why we get all these pi's over four, pi's over three, pi over two, um, pi. And so that's what um, the other angle measurement. So we have two angle measurements. We have radians, uh, radians and we have degrees. Um, mainly, you just need to focus on this part of it. Um, for the homework, you're going to just type in all the radians, write them all out. Just do it once. If you haven't memorized, you haven't memorized. If you don't, that's a step towards that process. If you were in my live class, we would I would hand out a sheet every day for like two weeks and just say fill out the sheet. And that way, I kind of force you to do it um, and turn it in to me for points. All right. So let's talk about our functions here. Um, so terminal points, so the points where it ends on the graph is determined by t. So here, here's a nice way of saying what is it mapped out. So sine of t or sine of my angle, right? So t here's our angle for us. What is that? Well, here, what it's mapping out on that unit circle. Let's go back to the unit circle, right? Here, this is my x value, this is my y value, right? Here, x and y. And so cosine tells me my x value, sine tells me my y value. But why is that? Why is that? Because here, the radius is always 1. So cosine, which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, is in this case going to be 1 over x. And in this case, for, uh, oops, for sine, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to y over 1. So here, we, um, so here we have this. So here, using this, you can use this for a unit circle. You can have this. You should, you should know what these equal. So this is opposite over hypotenuse. This is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is opposite over adjacent. This is adjacent over opposite. This is hypotenuse over adjacent, and this is hypotenuse over opposite. Does everyone know what I mean when, when I do this? Yes, OK. So everyone know, knows Sakato or whatever you, you have, you remember it, where you have your angle here, you have your adjacent, you have your opposite, and you have hypotenuse, and then your sines and cosines. OK. Um, so let's talk about domains real quick. So sine and cosine, it's all real numbers. So um, I can plug in any real numbers for this. For tangent and secant, it's all real numbers except for um, pi over 2 plus n pi because pi over 2 plus n pi are, um, if we look here, at tangent, right? And pi over 2, I have 0 here. So I'm dividing by 0, so I can't do that. So here I have 0 over 1, so n and every pi over 2. And then here, the other one would be here, at pi over 2 plus pi, which would be 3 pi over 2. This will also divide by 0, so I can't do that. Um, so that's why this exists. For cotangent and secant, it's the y value, so we can't, so it's at the pi values I'm not allowed to do. Um, one thing that's good to know is in which quadrant is what thing positive or negative. So in the first quadrant, everything's positive, nothing's negative. In the second quadrant, sine and cosecant are positive. And then cosecant, secant, tangent, cotangent are negative. Um, third quadrant, tangent and cotangent are positive, and all of these are negative. Um, sine, cosecant, co cosine and secant. And then cosine and secant are positive in the fourth, and then sine, secant, 
And the reason you kind of want to know that is because in some of the questions they ask you as we go through this trick stuff, you're going to figure out which quadrant you're in, and then you should be able to determine the sign on your function. Most of the time, um, so it's good to know these because you need to, uh, because when you take the inverse, say I take an inverse of an angle, um, of a half, that's going to produce a number. Or it's going to produce the angle, right? Because this is asking, this asks the question, sine of what equals a half? And this should be pi over 6. Unless I'm crazy. I could be crazy today. Isn't it pi over 6? Yeah. So, um, you guys seen the inverse function before as well? Or another way of saying it's the arc function? Yes. Okay. All right. So you guys are all comfortable with that. All right. Um, so here's a table for us to fill out. I don't know if I'll actually fill it out with you guys. Um, if you're all really comfortable with this, we'll, we may just go back to doing exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, and then I'll make these notes extra credit or something. So to fill out this table, you just basically read. Um, actually, no, let me fill this out because I want to show you a couple tricks to help you memorize it. So here, this would be a half. Um, and then it goes to square root 2 over 2, and then square root 3 over 2. And then here, it'd be, oops. <laughs> I joined in too early. This is zero. It's a sign of zero, zero. So you're just looking at these y values. A half, square root two over two, square root three over two, and square root, whoops, and then one, and then one. But another way of looking at this is I start at square root of zero over two. This goes to square root of one over two. This goes to square root of 2 over 2. This goes to square root 3 over 2. And then square root of 4 over 2. And so one way of quickly memorizing these common angles is you just take, it's over 2, and then you start at 0, and you just increase it by 1. So 0 square root of 0 is just 0. So 0 over 2 is 0. Square root of 1 is just 1, so that's a half. Square root of 2 over 2 is just that. Square root of 3 over 2 is just that. Square root of 4 is 2, so it's 2 over 2, which gives you 2. So this is, you know, a nice quick way to memorize this. And cosine will go the opposite, so it'll be 1 square root 3 over 2, or square root, and then square root 2 over 2, and then square root 1 over 2, which is just 1 over 2, and then 0. And so that's just a, a quick and dirty way of, um, of, um, crunching through those numbers. And so it's a good thing to memorize. Um, hold on, I'll follow something real quick for me. Yeah, I've lost it, good job. Okay, and so here, tangent would be zero. Then here we're gonna divide these two, so square root three over two nine. Because remember, what is tangent? Tangent is also, sine over cosine. So tangent of theta is also sine over cosine of theta. You should have this somewhere stored away in your brain. Um, yeah, so have this somewhere stored in your brain as well. So this is just an easy way of saying sine goes from zero to one, and then uh, cosine goes from one to zero. It's just an easy way to remember that. And then if you have, if you, if you know this, and you know the signs from before, you can cal calculate anything. Here, square root 2 over 2 is 1. Uh, this over this will give me square root, uh, square root 3. And then here, this is does not exist. So DNE is a nice way of saying does not exist. For the cosecants, you just flip this. So um, you, can't, you can't flip the 0, so that's DNE. Um, here we flip this, so I just get the square root of 2. I flip this, I get 2 square root 3 over 3, and then 1 must be giving me 1 here for the cosine. Remember this cosecant of t is just equal to 1 over sine of t. 
and then secant of t is equal to 1 over cosine of t. There is a very good mathematical reason why secant is 1 over cosine and cosecant is 1 over sine, but no one ever gets to it. And I was thinking, you know, if I was just going to rewrite some math rules, I'd make it that secant and sine would be the ones that flip over each other just to help beginning students. Um, but I don't get to rewrite the math rules, or at least the terms anyways. And I swear, if I, if I, was, in, if I was a president, I would definitely just force the imperial system to be dead. No more feet, no more that. I mean, everyone would hate me for a good, like, for like a good, you know, generation. But after that, everyone would be on the same measuring system, and, and we'd all be we talk to each other better since we do better. I think it's S to C and then C to S. Yes. Um, All right, so, so, so once again, in uh, sine, uh, co cotangent is one over uh, tangent, so that one's really nice, actually. And you have 3, 1, square root of 3 over Oh, no. It should be square root of 3 over 3. I was like, that doesn't flip right. Well, I'm glad I have it memorized. Okay. Here, if I divided this by this, I get square root of 3 on the bottom. The 2's cancel, so it should be square root of 3 over 3. So I, I don't know if I said that right or I just messed it up. All right, so so here's here are the basics of trades, and these are the numbers you should just have in your head. If you're going to take back, let's just have these numbers in your head. Do yourself a favor, just at some point, you don't necessarily have to do it for this class, but before you walk into calculus, just memorize this, because um, these come up all the time, and it's just something nice to know. Um, I memorized it, then I forget it, then I have to re-memorize it. Sometimes you just lose the num numbers in your head. All right, let's talk about evaluating trig functions. So I have a whole bunch of these, right? And so um, I'm going to explain a little bit how to do it by hand. How do we do this? I'm only going to do a couple of these. This is this is meant mainly when we're doing it all by hand. You're going to have to do this by hand at, at some point, but not for this class. So we're not going to do all of these. Here, this is something you should just have memorized. This is a half, right? And how do I know this is a half? It's because cosine, because I know the order it goes 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. I have that in my head, right? Well, here, it's really close to here, so that's square root 1 over 2 for that. All right, so, so let's talk about, it's like, how do I, if I only have these members, numbers memorized in my head, how do I do something like 4 pi over 3? Well, I just figure out what quadrant 4 pi over 3 is, right? So 4 pi over 3 is less than, this should be in quadrant, should be in this quadrant, right? And so here I can tell if it's positive or negative. And so, um, what if you let me do one by hand? Let me just do one by hand, okay? So here, so here we have pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three is here. So four pi over three is here, right? And so it's going to look this angle and this angle are roughly the same. And so I'm going to get that my reference angle here, so we call this a reference angle, will be pi over 3. And so here with sine of pi over 3, why well, that's uh, you know square root of 3 over 2. So that's how you do that. And so here, this angle and this angle are the same, except on this way, 
I, I'm in sine it's negative, so I need to negate this. And so here, this is equal to minus pi over three over two. Now, how are you guys gonna do it? You're literally just gonna go here. Thank you. Wolfram Alpha. There you go. Wolfram. I'm just going to type in sine of 4 pi divided by 3. Uh, it punches it out. So here it shows you the reference angle here. Here it's doing the reference triangle, and that's what I'm showing you here is how to get that. You figure out what the triangle is, you figure out what the degree is. Your reference triangles are always, um, let me talk about reference triangles for one quick second. Um, so let me go to, let me just go to a blank one. Do I have a blank one? Yeah, let me do this one. So your reference triangle is always going to be the triangle. So it's the closest to the x axis. And so it's always this triangle, right? So it's always using the x, x axis. And so depending on which, where you're at is what angle you measure for your reference triangle. Um, and so it's, so, you're, so here, here we're gonna count backwards, here we're gonna count backwards, here we're counting forwards, and here we're counting forwards. And so that's how you do it by hand is you figure out what your reference triangle is and then you figure out what sign it is. That's what, that's literally how you do it by hand. Um, or you can completely memorize the circle and then just then it's all here for you okay we're not going to do the rest of these so just go ahead and skip the rest of these i mean i figured you can type them in a calculator or do reference angles um i want to spend some time on other things today all right so let's do this so um here's a fun example for us to crunch through So let's pretend I know cosine of t. So do we have, technically I've taught you everything to do this. So cosine of t is in quadrant, uh, cosine of t in quadrant four um, is three fifths. So I want you to find the values of all the other trigonometric functions. I'm like, okay, so let's figure this out. So how would I figure out? So if you know what sine is and cosine is, you can figure out the rest of the trigonometric functions, right? Because if you know what sine is, you know what cosine is, you know what tangent is. And if you know what sine is, you know what cosecant is. And if you know what cosine is, you know what uh, secant is, right, secant. And if you know what tangent is, you know what cotangent was. So we know what cosine is, it's three fifths. So how do we find sine? Well, we could use this. Remember this sine, sine of t squared plus cosine of t squared is equal to one. Well, do I know what cosine of t squared is? Well, yeah, what sine of t squared is cosine of three fifths, right? <laughs> squared equals one. So sine of t equals one minus nine twenty-fifths, which is equal to 16 twenty-fifths. Sine squared. Don't write it this way. This is a bad way of writing. Sorry, that's bad notation. But if you're multiplying this, put put your put your power on the sign, not on the variable, because this means something drastically different than this. Um, this means take sine of t and then square it, and this says take the sine of t squared. So sorry about that. Please put it put it on that. Does that make sense where to put that? Are we gonna have problems like this on the quiz tomorrow? I'll probably give you something like this. That's probably what I'll give you. Um, because that'll at least somewhat test your knowledge of what's going on. Um, the rest of these is like I can use a calculator. Good. I might put one or two, I might put one or two points just to give me points, right? Um but this is most likely what I'll put on the quiz tomorrow. I have, I have to finish writing the quiz question for this. All right, so sign of this. So here I'm going to take the square root of both sides. 
And so I get sine of t is equal to the square root of 16 over uh, 16 over 25, which is the same thing as 4 fifths. Okay. But remember what quadrant we're in. We're in quadrant 4. Quadrant 4, that means sine, because it's really plus or minus this, right? But since we're in quadrant 4, since we're in quadrant, since we're in quad 4, it's going to be sine of t is equal to the negative version. Okay. So that, that makes sense how I solve for this. So here, if I'm given one of my cosine functions or sine functions, well, that squared plus this, and so cosine plus sine squared is equal to one. And so you plug in the value you know for one, move it over, minus it across, take the square root, figure out because of what quadrant you're in, this would be negative four fifths. And then now that I have this, I can actually fill out the rest of this. So sine of t is minus four fifths. Tangent is minus four fifths. Um, so tangent is negative four fifths divided by three fifths, so it would be negative four over three. And then for these, you just, and for all these, we just flip them, right? We just flip up, flip what it is. So this would be minus five fourths. This would be five thirds, and this would be negative one. Okay. That makes sense how to do that. Yeah. Okay. Because once you once you get one, you can get the other, um, and then you just and then the rest of these you're just kind of flip and plug in. And that, that this will this will probably I I know. Never mind. I'll just say check. This is the quiz, right? I will say this is the quiz question. I'm ninety percent sure I gave you one to crunch through on the homework. Okay. I'll double check that before I do that. All right, let's talk about graphing these real quick. Um, it's important to know how the graphs work and why it works. Um, and then we'll actually do next week, we're going to do crunching with all this. We'll actually crunch through some of the trick stuff. Oh, no. All right, so, so here, if we just plug in our values, and here, I'm only doing this again so that it kind of reinforced the memorization. So here we have a half. Here we have, um, oh, I skipped pi over four for some reason. Okay. <laughs> if there was pi over four, we'd put, oh boy, pi over four is equal to um, square root two over two. And then here, half square root three over two one and then we're going to go back down square root three over two i skipped the half right again for whatever reason or the fourth sorry the fourth so this would be a half zero minus one square root two minus square root three over two one um Oh, I remember why I did this. I was like, why, why are we doing this so weird? Because each one of these steps, I'm going up by six. So six, five over 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 six, right? Um, five over six, that's really what I'm doing here. Except for this one. Oh, that's not three by three pi over two. Right. Then pi over six, pi over six, and so I'm always walking the same increment. That's why I did that. Um, these are still negative, sorry. And then we have zero. Okay. So what so what's going on here? So as we're sweeping through the angles, what does sine pick up? Well sine picks up the y value, right? So here I have nothing, right? And then here, so here I'm at nothing. Here, I'm at a half, and so let's, let's put minus one to one. So here I'm at a half, and so a half. Here I'm at three pi over two, so we put in the three pi over two. Here I'm at one, right? I'm back at three pi over two, I'm back to a half, and then at zero, at zero I'm at, and this is at pi. 
and then here, so I'm so I'm locking this length here, right? And then this is zero, and then here I go back to this, go back to here, go back to one, but now it's negative, so and then we fill it in this way. And so here I can see from my unit circles I map through this, it's just mapping the y. And so the point it does look like this, and you probably knew it looked like this, right? Everyone's probably graphed a sine function before. The reason it looks like that is it's graphing the y values on the circle. And so as we graph the y values on the circle, we get this. Um, here, let's go ahead and do this. So from minus pi to pi to 2 pi to 3 pi to 4 pi. Oops. All right, I can draw. So here, let me just do it in segments. That way, if I mess up, I can fix it. You know, it doesn't look super pretty. And this is one and negative one. And so it just repeats itself. So we're here, it repeats itself again, and then it'll repeat itself back here. And so this is called a periodic function. So it's a periodic function that has a two pi period so after and that basically means that sine of x plus two pi is equal to sine of x and so um, if you have a really large pi right say if i want to say what is the sine of 51 pi right Well, you can simplify that because there's a lots of two pi's in here. In fact, there's 25 of these two pi's, right? So this is just a sign. This is equal to the sine of pi, unless the sine of pi well, is zero, right? And so for huge numbers, we use this periodicity um, to figure out what the solution is for stuff in between. Uh, where's that? For stuff that's in between. This. So all you really have to memorize is these. Or in this case, I'm gonna write it. I have to remember if you know these right here, you know all all the values you really need to know. Um, and then everything else is to guess these values and put a sign on it. That's literally all trig's about for evaluating trig functions. Um, we're gonna do the same thing here quickly with cosine. Um, so notice here, if I had two pi, same thing for cosine. These have periods of two pi. Um, so it's cosines, just quickly crunch the numbers here, square root of 3 over 2, half, 0, minus a half, minus square root 3 over 2, negative 1, square root 3 over 2, 1 over a half, 0, a half, square root 3 over 2, and 1. Okay, so what is this measuring here? So for each time I, for each angle I'm mapping out, I'm measuring my x values. And so I'm kind of measuring here, I'm at full x value. When I'm on this point in the circle, I'm only at this x, or yeah, I'm at this x value. When I'm here, I'm at this x value. When I'm here, I'm not. Here, I'm measuring this negative x value. When I'm on this point, measuring that value. And it's the same thing, and we draw in the same thing. So here, we're going to start at 1, and here at pi. Uh, over 2, we're going to go to 0, and then here at pi, we're at minus 1. Okay. Actually, let me put pi over 2 here. And put pi here. And then pi over 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi, and so it comes in, goes to 0. Here it's at negative one, goes back to zero, and goes back up to one. And then if we drew it in for long terms, we'll just do minus pi, pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. So here I come in, down, negative one, back up to here. Here, down, negative one, come back up to here, and then here, down, negative one. 
So you should have all these graphs really well in your mind and all this, and this is what Howler built and all this. You may have not have seen them built this way, so that's why I'm kind of going over it a little bit. All right, so let's do what we've been doing the whole time. I want you to get used to this, even though I'm probably not gonna touch on this. I want you to get used to this a little bit. So what happens when I do stuff to my graph? Well, you can do the same, same modifications we've done all term. So if I go up to, so now if I go up to my, so I'm going to move everything up to. So everything goes up to. So here I'll start. So my max will be three. My my minus will be, my lowest will be one, right? Because cosine goes between one and negative one. And so when I graph this, you have pi and two pi, I'm going to do this, right? Where this is two. And so basically I just move the line up. So if I'm moving it up or down, I'm gonna move my line, my zero line to look like this. So that's just a quick and dirty way of doing this here. If I take the, the minus of cosine, so here would be pi and two pi comes in, goes down two minus and comes back up. And so actually it should curve a little, it should look a little bit different on the curve. But here we just take what it was and we flip it upside down. Amplitude. So amplitude is the largest value. And so here, if I put a two in it, so instead of one, I'm going to put two up here. Okay. And so instead of one, I'm going to put two up here. And so for cosine, I go up to pi and two pi. It's going to come down, go up, blah, blah, come back and come up to two pi. So it goes to two. Um, here for negative three, I'm gonna actually do both, right? So not one, two, but now three, I'm gonna start at negative three and go to three. And so my range is uh, bigger this time. And so this all should seem vaguely familiar. And then I just work backwards. Okay. Um, the only one that's slightly interesting, and we'll just end on this note, so amplitude is fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about amplitude, and here we have a period. So our period, if we start putting k's in here for our graphs, is going to it's going to change how fast I go. And so the period is going to be two pi over the at k. So let's crunch through that real quick. So um, here, my amplitude is three. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm gonna go from minus three to three. Here, then I gotta look at my period. So my period is gonna be two pi over two, so it equals to pi. So that means that this sine function goes through its whole period of pi distance. Um, or as we've learned, we've horizontally shrunk this by half, right, or by two. So we squished it by two. So here, if I had pi and two pi, I'm actually gonna run through my whole thing twice. And so here, we put in the halfway marks. And then here, we put in the quarter marks just because it makes it easier. And so here, um, we're gonna start at zero. This is sign, we're gonna start at zero. Here, the quarter mark, it gets up, comes back down, goes down. Oops. That goes down and then at the quarter mark goes to here and hit that. So that's one period in pi. And if I was going to label this, this would be pi over two and this would be pi over four, right? This would be three pi over four. And so here I've gone through my whole period and then it just repeats itself. So it's going to put in my quarter marks again, just to make it a lot easier. Just comes up, comes down, comes in, comes out. Oops, it should go down just a little bit more. Okay. And so if you have different periods, you can graph it. So here, let's do it at a half. So it's my period now. It's still pi over two divided by a half. And so it's actually four pi. And so this will complete a single period in four pi distance. And so here, we'll have pi, we'll have two pi, we'll have three pi and here we'll have four pi. I'm 
So what I usually do, what I usually do is I figure out what this is, right? Um, let me let me let me do this in the order that my brain crunches through it real quick. Go ahead and get rid of that. And so the best way to graph the sine or cosine functions if you have a different period than pi over if the period's been changed, figure out what this is and then cut that in half, right? So that's two pi. Cut each of those in half. So that'd be pi and three pi over two, if you figure out what the number is. And then you have your quarter marks. And then at the quarter marks, you know how to do what you need to do. Here, this is negative, so I'm gonna go negative first. The quarter mark, hold on, here, a negative mark at the quarter, I hit that, and then I come back in, I'm back to where I was. Hit my quarter mark and go back in, okay? And so just whatever it is, and so here, wait, let's pretend, let me just give you something real funny real quick. So sine of, I don't know, four thirds x, something awful, right? <laughs> well, the period here would be two pi divided by four thirds, which would be the same thing as two over four times three pi, so it would be three halves pi. So, prior, so this would be the period, right? And if I was gonna draw that out, I'd sketch out to here, and I'd write three pi over two. And then I find out what the halfway point is, well, that'd be three pi over four, right? And then I figure out what the halfway of the quarter point is, so it'd be three pi over eight, and then I'd put a mark here. You can calculate what that is. I'm not going to right now. But the way, oh, I guess you could. So three pi over eight plus three pi over four would be uh, nine pi over eight. Yes. <laughs> um, and then you can, and then you can just sketch it in. Okay, so no matter what this is, that's the way to figure out that. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, we're gonna skip for the sake of notes because I do I did want to do that. Um, let me show you the last step to this. We're not gonna do this in this class, but let me just show you the last step of this. Um, here we have our phase shift, and so here you can phase shift this. And so the first thing you do is you move it to the right or to the left by x amount. And here you have to be very careful that you have it in this form. So if you have something that's not in, so like this, we haven't pulled out the two yet. You have to pull out the two first. You have to pull out the two first. And then here we can just move it left or right and we call this the phase shift. So shift to left, shift to right and all this other stuff. I didn't want to get too deep into all this. Um, you're going to do this. You're going to do phase shifting and engineering and all this. So I probably should have done this, but um, I just don't want to harp on this too much because I think most of you are quite comfortable with this. I could be wrong. Um, well, let me ask you a question. Do you guys want me to do another quick example of a log, a log equation and an exponential equation before we call it a day? Or you want to just go work on the homework and we'll ask those questions tomorrow? Uh, any votes? A &A? An example. I have one vote for an example. That's good enough. Let's give it an example. All right. Um, yeah, let me just make stuff off the top of my head. Uh, let me show you the homework real quick. Let me show you the homework real quick. Oops, that's not showing the homework real quick. We're good. Let me do. Let me do one example of something. I just to review it, and then we'll go for tomorrow. Can I have my homework, please? Let's just show the homework. Work, work, and just. Um, yeah, homework for trig. You're just gonna fill this out with all the angles. So fill this out with both angles and degrees. You don't need to put the points because if you fill out this table, you'll achieve this. Fill out the signs real quick, just get in memory. Make sure you can type stuff into a calculator. Um, here's here's another one of the fun quadrant problems. This is probably what you'll see on the exam. 
um, state the delay and range for these things, and then do one little sketch. Okay, so that's basically what the homework is. Let me do. Uh, let me just do one quick. Let me show you an alternate method of doing. Um, Photoshop. There we go. Let's open up a new file real quick. Yeah, that's fine. Lose a good open. That's fine. So let's pretend we had here. All right, I'm a new layer. So I can erase all I want. So let's pretend. Let's say I gave you 7x plus 2 equals 9 x minus 1. Let's say, let's say you want to solve this one. So let me show you an alternate method. So here we're still going to take the log of 7, or log of both sides of x plus 2, the log of 9x plus 1. And here I have x plus 2 equals, or x plus 2 times ln of 7. And the reason I'm going to show you this is not because I think it's an amazingly good way to do it. It's just to help you to realize, oops, that should have been minus. Um, it's, I don't think it's a good, I think it's better to keep it, but I want you to, to be very clear of what's going on here. Ln of 9, because I think if I do this, it might, it might open up to what this. So remember, I said this is a number and this is a number. So you know what? Forget it. Let's just type in what the number is, right? <laughs> just open up. Let's go back to Wolfram Alpha. Just read Wolfram Alpha, please. All right. What is ln of 7? All right. So it is 9.1.94. So if we want to do two decimal places, I would always grab two extra just to be careful. That way that no rounding goes well. So I'll put in 1.9460. So this is 1.9460. And ln of um, nine is roughly two point one nine seven two. So this is two point one nine seven two. And so this will make this makes it easier because here I have one point nine four six zero x plus two times one point nine four six zero. This is just some number I can crunch through it equals two point one nine seven two x minus 2.1972. And so when, when, and last time when we moved all the logs around, we're just moving around numbers like this. And then here I'm just going to add this to both sides, right? 1.972 plus uh, 2.972, and then minus this from one, both sides, 1.460x minus 1.9460x. And then I guess if I was actually to solve that, and then you can just crunch through the numbers. And so if this is more comfortable for you, do it this way, okay? Does that make sense what's going on here? I mean, if you, because before we're just leaving, this was ln of seven, this is ln of, this is ln of seven, this is ln of seven. We just left it in its, in its kind of raw form, which is a good idea to do. But it is good to just crunch through it as the numbers just to realize what you're doing. It's like, oh, I'm just I'm just solving a very simple linear here with uh, what's going on. And so and so what we've been doing is we've been saying, well, this is ln of seven times x, right? Plus two ln of seven, right? That's what this is literally what we've been typing in, right? And then here I have ln of 9 times x minus ln of 9. Well, th these are the same, right? This the, Here I've rounded a little bit. Um, since I want two decimal places, I'm going to grab an extra two to make sure I round correctly, but that's that's the way of doing that one. All right. I think that's good enough. Um, I'll post the video of today's lecture soon, and then I'll let you guys just get to work. 
All right. Um, come with homework questions tomorrow. Any homework questions you have, you can ask me tomorrow. I'm more than happy to do them. Um, um, we'll take a test tomorrow. Um, it's over basically the homework, like it always is. Um, usual from Alpha to check your answers, and you guys should be great. Any questions? Anything you want to do before we call it a day? Nope. Okay. All right, guys. Well, then I'll let you guys go. Enjoy your day. Take care. Have fun. And um, talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, guys.